So what we're going to do is go ahead and open up your web browser. We'll go back to WordPress.com and then you can log in. So I'm going to log in here. And then when you log in, remember, switch up on top left my sites, and then WP Admin, so we can get the full dashboard. <coughs> so we've looked at most of the screens that are available here in the dashboard. There's a, a couple we haven't quite explored yet, um, and some we'll need to get into a little bit more detail about. But here, the first thing I want to look at is, this is another uh, visual um, or foundational thing I want to look at. Uh, these are going to be widgets. <laughs> so over on the left side, you've got appearance, and inside of appearance we've got widgets. Now widgets is just their term for these like little add-ons, not exactly like plugins, although they are, they are related and we'll talk about the difference between plugins and widgets. But this widgets screen here, this is, um, as I often say, you'll be able to do things depending on your theme. My particular theme, I forgot which one I've got active, but on mine it says I've got a sidebar area and a footer area you might have more or less than me. That's fine. It depends on your theme. Basically what widget areas are, you know, I'm going to open on another window my my site just so that I can see it side by side. Okay, I remember my site now. So I've got my site here. Yours is probably different. And I've got these two widget areas, sidebar and footer. Mine kind of makes sense. I kind of know what a sidebar is. It's on the side of my site. I don't know exactly what it looks like yet. And I've got a footer widget area, which I assume is down on the footer area somewhere. Yours might have more or less widgets, and that's fine. It depends on your theme. So these are just placeholders of the design of your theme where you can add little, uh, little mini functional apps, widgets. So on the left side here, I've got uh, a long row, a collection of all of these possible widgets. And these come from either built-in widgets into WordPress, or some that come with your theme. Or when we talk about plugins, these come from a plugin. Like let's say I wanted to show my latest photos from Flickr. When we talk about plugins, we can find a plugin that will do that. It'll give us a new widget, and then we add that widget to, for example, a sidebar. So now my site is going to have that widget. I can show you an example of that on my own blog site, where if you look at, you know, it's my, my blog here, and I've got a sidebar right there, and there's a widget there, my social media widget. This one just shows off all the social media that I'm on. I'm not 100% active on all of them, but I do have an account there for just about all of those networks, and I post stuff often. But uh, that's what I wanted to do. Out of the box, WordPress didn't have something quite like this, so I had to find some plugin that gave me more features. It gave me a widget, and then I said, put this widget right here on my screen, sidebar. Or I could put it on the footer, you know, this particular theme also has a footer here where I could say, okay, on one column of my footer, put the archives to show all of the months where I've posted something, and put another widget that shows the categories of blogs that I've written. So uh, browsing your widgets, they may be different, but I see something like about me, widget, author grid, blogs I follow, calendar. So they give you a little simple description like calendar. A calendar of your site's posts. That's a good one. That. Hmm. Custom menu, delicious links, display WordPress posts, Flickr. There it is, display your recent Flickr photos. So depending on your theme, 
and a variety of other factors, you may or may not have the same widgets that I do. But let's say, hopefully we all have this one. Um, do you have one? It depends on your theme. But let's try this, just to so we all kind of see the same thing. One of your widgets is going to be called search. So you can plug in your search box, uh, depending on your widget area. So I'm going to drag my search box. You can drag it and then drop it into uh, any one of your widget areas, but I'm going to put it in the sidebar. Depending on your widget, it might also give you a, a, a spot to add a title. So I can type there, you know, search my stuff. If you already have it, that's okay. That was part of the, the theme. Yeah. The theme. yeah. Um, themes can either activate or deactivate widgets. And on your particular one, it already has it. If it does, that's okay. Uh, I'm just going to explain here. So I didn't have a search widget. So what I did was I dragged one over and I put it there. And I also changed its title right here. Notice you can open and close this. And I just put search my stuff. And I'll save that. So I'm going to go back to visit site and I'm going to see exactly where did that end up because I have a sidebar but I don't know if it's on the left, I don't know if it's on the right. So I'm going to go back to my visit site. There it is, search my stuff. My particular theme then shows a big old search my stuff box right there with a search feature. Mine uh, has a widget called Blog Stats, and it says show a hit counter of your blog. So if you want to see how much traffic, or you want to show off how much traffic you're getting, you can activate that. So you can put more than one widget in a widget area. There's really no limit, technically, but visually it might look very crowded. I'm going to drag the Blog Stats over, and I'm going to put it in my sidebar right below Search. And then it says the title, it's going to say Blog Stats. And in my case, it says it's going to have a number and the word hits. Well, that what that's saying is you can make it say 100, you know, 1,200 um, views, you know, whatever word you want that to say. You know, 1,200 cool people visited, you know, whatever you want that to say, you can change it and save it. Actually, I'm going to say my blog stats. Anything you want. I'm going to save it and view my site. So now below my search, I've got a new widget right there, my blog stats, and I'm very popular with 19 views. So there's a lot of these widgets. There seems to be like 20 of them maybe available for us, and we can always add more. Um, and I'll show you how to do that once we talk about plugins. But uh, widgets are very powerful because they add a, a few more features to your site. And depending on your theme, it's more ways to customize your site. So I'm curious, what, what, where is my footer? Uh, so one of, the, one of my favorite widgets, which is deceptively simple, if you scroll down, the widget is called text, arbitrary text, or HTML, or CSS or I think even JavaScript. So this is just going to be a little box for you to write whatever CSS or HTML or JavaScript you want. So it seems just like text, like I'm going to write a paragraph. But you can write actual code there. So I'm going to pull the text over and put it down in my footer. 
because I don't know exactly what it looks like until I save it and visit site. So I, to find out what these things do, the description might not be that descriptive. So what I usually do is I put a widget in and I just change some of the options and see what happens. So I don't know how this is going to look yet, so I'll just put in a title. I'll just say, uh, this is my footer. I'll probably change that. And I'll write, here is some footer text. Blah, blah, blah. Save it. I have a question. Mm -hmm. You just mentioned uh, you, you can do the CSS. Mm -hmm. That applies only to that box, or does it apply to the whole thing? It applies to this box. To apply CSS to the whole site, we'll, we'll do that elsewhere. But I'm going to save that and uh, visit site. And now I see, okay, look at that. It still has at the very, very bottom this information about the website sort of copyright info. Um, but above it, it gave me this new area, this widget area. And whatever text I wrote in my title shows up there. This is my footer. And the actual text is right there. You think, again, okay, well, that's pretty simple. I write some text. But again, we can use HTML here. So if you know some HTML, I could do something interesting like make columns uh, or add background colors. You know, we'll, we'll talk about some CSS and so forth as time goes on, but here I'm just playing with some CSS. There's no button that says, give me a pink background. But if you know a little CSS, and here's my example, I wrote, I wrote this little bit of code here, and it gave me a pink background. So if I know other HTML or CSS, I can add it there. What this is also useful is people sometimes ask, can I add like uh, you know affiliate marketing links or Google AdWords or whatever? This also works in there. So if your site gives you some HTML code or your service or whatever, whatever HTML code someone gives you, you can put it in this text area on your site and then it'll work. So for example, if I go over to YouTube and find a really cool video, Sometimes there's cool videos on this on this channel here. And I can get this code from YouTube to embed the video into my site. Well, YouTube gave me this code to show that video. I've got a video in my footer. So any code that uh, that you get from a site, you can apply it to to your WordPress by using the text widget. Obviously, I did that kind of fast, but I'll explain uh, some more of this more advanced CSS and HTML stuff as time goes on because this is one of the limits of having WordPress.com. Sometimes you can't do everything you're envisioning. For example, I want to eventually perhaps sell products on my website. I can do that with various plugins. That's what I do for, for my clients. Clients that need a website that sells products, it requires a plugin. But the, but the bad thing is that on WordPress.com, we cannot add plugins. We cannot use any plugins except the ones they've already given us. The reason for that is because often plugins are made by other companies and therefore WordPress.com does not want to give you tech support for some uh, plugin, some software that they did not create. So we don't even have an option here. Once we graduate from our training wheels, we're going to see a new link here that says plugins. And we'll be able to add plugins like e-commerce and other advanced features. But we can't do that until we buy our own .com name. But at the moment, we have a little bit of that control, like how I got this video out of YouTube. I, I looked, oftentimes what you want to look for is the embed code. 
uh, you know, YouTube gives you this, many other software, uh, many other websites give you some embed code and basically that code will, will let you take something from some other site and put it on your own site. So these are widgets and the text one actually I find I use that one a lot because it allows me to write my own code there that might not have been doable other methods. So mine only has two widget areas. Um, does anyone have more than more than that? More than two? How many do you have? Yeah, three. You have three. Another you know? footer. No footer. Hmm, okay. Three footers and <laughs> three footers. Okay, he took your footers. Uh, so it depends on the theme. You'll have different widget areas. Uh, when I added a widget, for example, I added this search. This is a new feature. It wasn't available before. Um, WordPress works on a system of templates or the theme. And once you apply a theme, it applies that design to every page on your site. Sometimes you need a certain page to look different than the other pages. It's a little more advanced. That's templates. We'll get to that later. But at the least, we have the ability to customize things with widgets because of this visibility here. Right now, when you add any widget to a widget area, it applies to everywhere on your whole site. If instead you want this search box to only appear on certain pages, you can go to Visibility, and then you can say... Do you get options under your Visibility? No. Yeah, yeah, we should. I'm not sure why it's not loading up. Maybe something's going on, but imagine that worked. What you would see there is something like show the sidebar on this page only, mm -hmm. or don't show that search on these pages. So you would be able to refine where you would see these things. I don't know why, but so this is not visibility is not working for anyone right now. Yeah. All right, weird. Maybe we broke WordPress. But uh, clicking visibility is supposed to let us fine-tune exactly how our, our widgets show up. I'm going to go to another page and come back. Sometimes that wakes it up, so I'm going to go elsewhere and then come back to Appearance, Widgets, and maybe that'll wake it up. Yeah, that did it. So, try that. Go to someplace else, like Media. Just go any other page. And then come back to Appearance, widgets and then click visibility of your search so here we can set up rules we, right now it says the the search show it if this result happens or hide it if this result happens so I'm gonna leave it on show and then it says, if this category is present, or this author, or tag, or date, or page, or taxonomy. Um, so this is more complicated. We're going to talk about categories and tags in a moment. But let's say date. Uh, let's say page. Show the search if the page is my About Me page. So this is only going to show the search box when someone is viewing the About Me page. Let me save that. So I'm on the home page. The search box went away. I'm going to go to the you know, About Me page. I'm going to go to the Contact Me page, actually. And in the Contact Me page, search appears, but not on the other pages. Because I changed its visibility right here. I said, show this, show this widget. If it's on the page, contact me. The opposite of that is hide. If I say hide if 
the page is contact me means it'll show everywhere else throughout my whole site except the contact me page. So I'm on the home page, I see search. I'm on the blog page, I see search. I'm on contact, and I don't see search. So that widget visibility can be very powerful. This is how you can customize your pages so that they don't all look exactly the same. And later on we'll talk about templates, which are even more powerful, but more complex. What about the last option? Which one? It says, uh, we select these, and then it says text on we're about to talk uh, about those in a moment, but oh. these are for organization, basically. Uh, we're going to talk about organization because uh, as we write blogs, blogging will be part of the class later on. We want to organize our blogs, and that term is just a way of how are you organizing things. So you can add as many widgets as you want and as many copies of widgets as you want to, uh, to your widget areas. So if I wanted to, you know, I can, I can drag over another search. I can drag another search widget and then play with the visibility because this search here, I can say, you know, I can be using this search, search my products and I could have it show on the page I don't have a, a, a shop page but let's say I put a shop page and then a different kind of search appears on the blog I could say on this search box it'll say search my blog visibility show if it's the page of blog. See that's why I've got two search boxes but they appear on the condition of either being on that page or that um, category and so forth. Now I've got a certain theme active and I've customized my menu, and I've customized my widgets. If I switch to another theme, it will probably forget that. It'll revert back to default. And so then I would have to rebuild my widgets areas and my menu. Um, not so complicated, but annoying. If I switch back to my first theme, it will remember what those were, however. So if I set up my current theme, cool widgets, everything, I switch to another theme, it'll forget. But if I come back to the original theme at whatever point, it did remember what I did originally. So what you just said, if you don't mind, if you switch themes, it doesn't remember the widgets. Exactly. That's yeah. So that's, uh, that's something we need to make a note of because, yeah, when we switch from theme to theme, it'll forget the, your menus and your widgets. You just have to set them again, and then they'll work. <coughs> But one thing that we can do to help us with that is, now you wouldn't be able to tell really, but do you notice if you hover over the word available widgets, do you see an upside down triangle there? If you click on the word available widgets, it collapses, so it opens and closes. I'm going to close it, and there's an area called inactive widgets. Mine is full of a bunch of things. Yours might be empty, but this says drag widgets here to remove them from the sidebar but keep their settings. Because let's say this sidebar here of search my products, I've got a couple of things to do. If I click the search and click delete, it deletes it and, re and forgets every customization that I did. That's not good. I don't want to remember exactly how did I set up my widget. I don't want to delete it. If you drag it outside like this, that'll, that'll, uh, that could delete it also. Instead, if you drag it into your inactive widgets area, It'll be placed there, and it will remember the customization you did. So that's one way to keep your widget 
settings and so forth safe. Although notice it does remove it from there. It doesn't delete it, but it just removes it and it's not active. You have to be careful because notice here I'm doing this, and for me it doesn't matter, but I'm selecting this meta and I'm deleting it, and I'm selecting this category and I'm deleting it. There's no undo for that. So if you really customize this widget here, and it had a lot of complexity, and you deleted it, there's no way to bring it back. I'm just deleting these old ones that don't don't matter to me. I'll bring this up again once we've got our our own .com. But if you've got on your sidebar, on any sidebar, if you've got a widget called Meta, remove it. Meta is your login link. We don't want to give everyone, you know, we don't want to tell everyone this is our login screen. We don't want to give everyone directions to our front door. So if you've got a widget somewhere here that says Meta, you can either remove it to the inactive section or just delete it. We're never really going to use it. I don't want people to see a login screen on my page. I only want to be able to access it myself. So to, to delete any widget, you can just click on its name and it opens up and then click delete. Well, on the top left area, you cannot delete these because these are all the ones you can use. But if it's on your, if it's an actual widget area, you can delete it from there or your inactive area. So just to just to show you, if you do have it in your if you do have it in your sidebar, you're just gonna say meta, but then it's gonna say, you know, site admin or login. We don't wanna give people that opportunity. So I don't recommend having that meta uh, widget. Custom menu is also a useful one because let's say I drag this custom menu into my sidebar and then it says okay select your menu. That one is contingent on or it's based on any menus you have created in the menu area. Remember we created a basic main menu but we can create a menu item full of let's say social media links and I could then put here custom menu and select my social media menu and it'll display it there, a list of all my social media. So that one's pretty useful to let people navigate your site my new menu. doesn't look that um, well designed, but uh, you have the ability to put another menu anywhere you want um, if, it's, if you've got a widget area. If your theme doesn't put the menu where you thought it was going to be, you might be able to put it where you want via widgets. There's some here I haven't I haven't seen before that seem useful. Um, contact info. Hmm. There's a contact info, so you can easily put um, that. I put it there in my footer. And now when I view it, 
Oh, look at that. It even gives me a cool map. So I just chose to contact me on the show map right there. So you can fill in these items here. And maybe I only want that contact info visible in my contact page. That was another con that was a new one, a contact info. So on my contact page, I made it show up only there. It doesn't show up everywhere else. If I'm back on my uh, home page, I don't have the contact there. But if I'm on my contact page, then I have that contact widget. This is a real Google map, so you can drag it and zoom in and all of that. That's a pretty good detail of, of our college there. It's showing us every room. that it's showing us right there. Wave to the camera. Okay, so that was uh, widgets. Once we talk about Plugins will revisit widgets because oftentimes a plugin will give you more features, such as widgets. These that come built in WordPress.com are pretty powerful, and there's a bunch of them. You can play with them on your own, such as if you've got an Instagram account, you can set this up to show your Instagram photos. Or what else? Show something here. I voted. Or links. You can display a milestone. That's, that one's new. I hadn't seen that one. Milestone. Display a countdown to a certain date. So I can say, okay, put that in my footer. How does that one work? The event, date and time, message the big days here. So you can tell it, okay, on, um, I don't know the date exactly, but let's say uh, July 23rd, 2015. We'll say count down to Comic Con. So it tells you, it gives you a countdown. It tells you something is coming. Uh, not as flashy as I thought it would be, but it says something like that. Five months to go. All right, so I'm going to give you a, uh, a moment to play with those if you'd like. We're going to take our first break. When we come back, I'll talk about categories, tags, and taxonomies. And then we'll talk a little bit about domain names. So we'll do 10 minutes at 6.12. We'll be back at 6.22 and learn a little bit more. <laughs> 